Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. It's Cynic Alex, and today I want to discuss obelisks and not CTPs. And in order to do this, I have to really get in the mindset of the free to play player. So I've put your new free to play champion, Ronin, here on the cover uh, to start us off and to give me good luck and good favor for today's video. Uh, and I'm doing this partially because I have the master guides with. CTP and obelisk guide and the and obelisk is just as important as the CTP guide and also I do know that uh, people some people complain from time to time it's not a big thing but it's it's there uh, that I focus too much on CTPs because I have so many of them and I frankly usually gouge or gauge I don't gouge, I gauge a character's value based on what they can do with a CTP, whether it's energy, rage, regen, etc. Um, and I don't actually test them out first with this with a regular obelisk and you know, it's hard for free to play players and it's harder for uh, players who just don't have a lot of luck getting CTPs, they might be whales that are just super unlucky. Uh, it's hard for them to relate and it's hard for them to build characters as I build them. So I have to focus on the obelisks from time to time. Additionally, I recently deleted the old CTP guide, which was really messy and ugly and it didn't even have a lot of the new characters. Um, I reckon that some of the people that are complaining that it's gone probably didn't even realize that and they just scrolled through to Spider-Man or whoever and equipped a CTP of Transcendence or a CTP of Patience. Mostly there was bad information on that list and that's why I deleted it and no, it's not coming back. So don't ask, uh, but you'll be much happier with this new list that I came up with the other day on the live stream. I did this uh, kind of just while I was brainstorming and it, I think it turned out really well. So I wanted to share it with you guys, hopefully it helps you out, gives you some new information. A lot of you guys will recognize a lot of this information, but it's just in a much more compact, uh, easy to read form. So we have the CTP guide. We have the one that I did uh, maybe like a month ago. I don't know, whatever, like nice color coding, shit like that. Um, it's all cute and whatever. Um, but now I've added down at the bottom, you can see it's right over here. Uh, so we're gonna scroll down so we can expose it here. Uh, this is the obelisk part. This is the obelisk um, side of the CTP guide. Uh, I'll just explain the way that I've uh, built it out. I've built it out essentially and I've, I've organized it in, in basically the same way as the CTPs except that you have to pay attention to the requirements for a PVE obelisk. Now if you don't if you don't meet these requirements it could still be a PVE obelisk it just won't be as good. So just keep that in mind. There's nothing stopping you from saying that a crit rate proc obelisk is a, is is a PVE obelisk. You can you can make that decision by yourself or just a cold damage proc obelisk is good for Luna Snow or Crystal uh, or Misty Knight even uh, or Iceman but it's really up to you to make that distinction I'm just trying to be as thorough as possible so the PV obelisk it must have one or two of the PVE stats plus a damage proc if it doesn't have a damage proc I don't consider it a PVE obelisk a hybrid obelisk would have to have it must have guard break immunity and a proc whatever the third stat is well, that's up to how lucky you are, but it has to have those first two stats to be considered a hybrid stat, and it has to have those first two stats to be considered uh, a good option for all of these characters and more. And I'll add to this list, um, I eventually want to get all, you know, 187 characters on here. We do have some repeats, um, but I'm still working on that. And then for a PvP obelisk, it must have one stat plus guard break immunity plus invincibility. So it basically has the same requirements as the hybrid stat, except instead of a damage proc, it's an invincibility proc. Um, and then the one extra stat that it should have is from this bottom list, either max HP, recovery rate, dodge, ignore dodge, or all defense. In, in the on the side of PVE that one or two stats has to be crit rate or and or crit damage and or ignore dodge and or ignore defense and or elemental damage now I didn't want to write elemental damage because that's a long ass word I also didn't want to write out cold damage fire damage and it's just annoying um, and tedious so what I did because I know you guys love colors and I know you guys love little tiny emojis and I put them in my title sometimes and I also love emojis and uh, colors. I put the element next to the character. It's a bit redundant, it, it's a bit of a hand-holding thing but I think it looks kind of cute and it does help break up some of the text uh, whereas otherwise it's just a bunch of white, you know, black and white lettering like this, this middle row here. Um, so I think this does help 
to to kind of pick out okay the the, the little purple orb thing that that kind of crystal ball that's mind damage guys the 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 flames that's obviously fire damage this is obviously lightning and then that's obviously cold it's not comprehensive i may be missing a couple of characters uh here and there i, I kind of just uh, skimmed through it a few times over to try to find all of them, but that's basically the essence of the uh, obelisk guide. So I've done my work. You're welcome. Let me just make some adjustments here. Uh, I do need to say damage proc. I, I realize that now, um, but yeah, this is basically what I'm trying to achieve with the uh, what am I doing with the damage proc? Um, that's so big. Whatever. With the uh, with the obelisk guide, I put a few uh, legend kind of abbreviations here. So CR is crit rate, CD is crit damage, IDG is ignore dodge. That one's a bit clunky, but ignore dodge and ignore defense have the exact same property. Now, keep in mind that for for veteran players, you should not need ignore defense on obelisks. Characters can get ignore defense from their third uniform slot or your fourth gear option. And you should have 20 to 30 to 35 percent ignore defense on your cards. This ignore defense is only really here, and I'll, I'll put a little asterisk next to it. Um, the ignore defense is really only here for very new players. If you're a very new player and you get like an ignore defense crit rate proc, that's actually really good because you're having a hard time capping your ignore defense already. Believe me, Whale Hunter 69 has plenty of problems with that. Um, but it should not be something that you're looking for um, once you get up to that point where you have enough ignore defense from your cards. However, still, if you have a character that, let's say, doesn't have a uniform yet, like, let's say, Nova or someone like that, or Storm, um, and you get a good uh, obelisk, let's say for Storm, you get lightning damage, ignore de defense, and a proc, maybe you want to give that to Storm because it's harder for her to cap her ignore defense, and yeah, maybe you'll be over the cap, but at least you'll be at 50%, which is more important than not being at 50% and losing that. Um, over here we have RR, which is recovery rate, GBI, which is of course guard break immunity, and then I don't really need to abbreviate max HP. I don't have all defense listed here, but it would be AD, which is not being taken up by anything else, so it's pretty straightforward. Um, but yeah, I think otherwise the list is pretty easy to read. Um, for characters that have CR slash CD, it's really just one or two or both, because these characters don't have um, enough, they don't have any or they don't have enough buffs to crit rate and, and or crit damage um, to not need one of them. So for the most part, most characters do have CR, CD. However, when a character only has CR, like Gambit, or when they only have CD, like let's say, um, did I say Korath? Maybe Korath's a bad example, but someone like, okay, let's say Sabretooth. Yeah, Sabretooth. So Sabretooth or even Cable. Cable's a better example. So Cable only needs crit damage. Gambit only needs crit rate. The reason for that is basically just coming down to either their skill effects or their passive effects. So in the case of Cable, his uh, second skill gives him 20% crit rate. So chances are uh, you're better off if you can only get one of those two uh stats on an obelisk it's better off to give uh, cable crit damage because with crit damage on his obelisk and crit rate on his skill he'll be able to get cap both of those so in my case i don't go over you know 50 55 percent on the crit rate but i want as much crit damage as possible here because i can make up for that 48 percent and i can bump that to 68 percent almost 69 percent by just casting his second skill which is part of his rotation so that's a really important thing to note especially for other characters like minerva more recently huge self buffs on three with the uh 10 percent crit rate uh, and then she's got other buffs as well but they're not you know buffing those same stats uh, and then for some Someone like Gambit, it's not in the skills, but it's rather in the passive, which is basically still the same thing. Um, over here on Lucky Streak, he's got 30% crit damage as a bonus, so he doesn't really need much crit damage. So for you to give him an, uh, an obelisk, you're better off giving him a crit rate proc, like what I have on, where did that go? Like what I have on Black Panther, which is a crit rate proc. And I do that for Black Panther because he not only gives himself crit damage when he's attacking, I believe he also, no, he gives himself, nope just there just the 10 percent there it's not there's not as much you definitely need to check for characters and make sure um uh, individually because 10 percent is not really that much and it's actually five percent with a 15 second cooldown so black panther is actually not a really good example i should probably make sure that black panther is crcd um but for someone like gambit it is really important and then it also 
relates to his CTP. If you have a badly rolled CTP of energy, for example, I've got a very low crit damage stat. That's actually perfect for Gambit because the other stats are, com you know, much better, much more competitive. Uh, but this will synergize with his existing passive to make sure that he's not too far over the cap. So as you can see there, I'm only 2.8 uh percent over the cap same thing goes for someone more recently like ronin and black widow ronin got a change to his passive precision aim it now gives him 20 percent crit rate so you want to make sure that you're focusing more on crit damage but rogue hero also gives him no it doesn't where did i think he got crit damage from is it from his uniform it is from his uniform okay so he gets 15 percent crit damage from his uniform and he gets an additional what was that 15 percent 20 percent 20% crit rate. So you could actually just go with ignore uh, dodge for his uh, obelisk if you don't have a CTP because he's got both crit rate and crit damage. And you can see there, I'm way over the cap because my CTP of energy has 40% crit damage. Even if it had 20%, it would still be fine. Um, so this is probably not ideal for him, but this was the only one I had. I know the only CTP of energy I had, guys. Uh, but so this is an example of a suboptimal uh, obelisk or CTP role for Ronin versus an optimal CTP or obelisk role for uh, Gambit. And so in this case, Black Panther, I should amend this to also say crit damage. And then in the case of Ronin, I actually did note Im uh, ignore, I want to say immune to something. But anyways, when I see I and I see three letters, I think immune to guard break. Uh, it should be, yes, ignore dodge. So hopefully that clears up uh, the kind of legend and the, the abbreviations hopefully this helps you uh, most importantly i want to know what additional characters you want to see on this list that you don't see on this list now so yes we do have a few repeats i mean uh, scarlet witch appears on all three because she can be built both ways emma frost appears twice Jean gray appears twice thor appears twice there's quite a few characters that have overlap but otherwise for characters that aren't here yet uh please let me know who you would like to see and you can also let me know if you want where you think they should go which of the three um, spots with the three slots and then what stat you would put as the kind of recommended stat to have for them so let me know what you guys think of the obelisk side of the CTP guide hopefully this uh, kind of makes amends with all of my free to play and kind of bad luck brothers and sisters who don't have ctps because i care about you just as much as the big whales who are rolling in ctps it's just that you can reach higher and you can see a, um, an even greater potential with ctps which is why i try to give all new characters most new character ctps r.i.p warpath um to see just how amazing they can be at 100 percent potential you got to reach 100 percent power before you fight yusuke so let me know what you guys think. Subscribe if you enjoy the content and you want to support me. And of course, if you like what you see, I hope to see you again tomorrow. Take care.